Hi everyone, Charlene Ortiz here. Today I wanted to talk about um, an issue that a lot of people deal with around this time of year. And that is dealing with depression during the holidays, especially if you're someone that suffers from a chronic illness. And um, this is definitely something that I have certainly dealt with over the years um, for a lot of different reasons. And it's, it's something that a lot of people do deal with. And I think um, we would be surprised with how many people, or maybe we wouldn't, <laughs> with how many people really do suffer from depression and anxiety, discouragement uh, during the holidays because the holidays aren't necessarily a happy time for everyone. And I just wanted to talk about some of the ways um, that can help you deal with depression during this time of year um, when you're with your family or not with the family or friends or what have you whatever your situation is i just wanted to talk about um, some of the ways that will help you to get through the holidays and um, so it doesn't end up being you know just a, a really really discouraging time where you spiral down into a deep depression and also just you know feeling alone like like you're the only one is go who's going through this or you're the only one who doesn't have family or friends or what have you um but for those of you that are really dreading this time of year especially with thanksgiving coming up in a few days um i assure you that you're not going to be the only one that's going to be dreading the holidays um, whether you're going to be with family or not I know uh, for me, the holidays can definitely be difficult uh, just because I don't have any family close by and I also don't really have any friends. Um, over the years, um, with clients that I've known and friends that I've had in LA, um, we certainly you know, would often have a place to go for Thanksgiving. Um, last year, I, I had a friend of mine come to visit for the holidays or for Thanksgiving. We went out to dinner with her, so we've always you know, kind of had something to do. Um, this year, uh, we don't really have any plans for Thanksgiving. It's, well, we might go out to eat or something. I don't know. We might just stay home and just rest <laughs> and just enjoy, you know, not working that day, especially my husband. Um, so I'm not really sure, but we certainly uh, don't have any definite plans. Now, I know that for sure that the fact that I'm married um, definitely does make the holidays a lot easier because I'm not completely alone. Um, but there are a lot of people that are completely alone during this time of year and they don't really have friends or family and for whatever reason, you know, whether it's something they brought on themselves or they've just lost a lot of family members or, you know, they've just um, don't really have friends or what have you. There's a lot of reasons that people don't really have a place to go or friends or family that they can be with during this time of year. And so that's one reason that it can be incredibly depressing. Another reason could be um, people that are just going through a difficult time in life, whether it's in a relationship or financially or with their health. Um, there could be a lot of people where this is just a time of year that kind of reminds them that um, maybe, maybe they recently went through a divorce and reminds them that they're not married anymore. It's just kind of a big reminder of, um, maybe a loved one that you've lost. Um, and the holidays are a very painful time because, you know, it's, it's just a big reminder that that loved one isn't here anymore, um, to celebrate the holidays with, because the holidays are such a family oriented time of year. Um, or family and very close friends to come together. So if there's someone very close to us, very dear to us in our life that's not with us anymore, um, this could be a very painful time for that reason. Um, it could also be because uh, we're broke, you know, and the holidays are definitely a time where people go out and buy presents, they spend money, that you know, whatever. And if you don't have any money, if you don't um, have the finances to buy presents for people, you can just feel discouraged about that. You know, or if you're, again, dealing with health challenges, um, again, you know, especially if you're seeing family members you haven't seen for a long time, um, it sometimes can be very difficult when they approach you and they're like, oh, what have you been up to? 
And really the only thing you have to say, well, I don't know, I've been sick and spend most days in bed. Or <laughs> and that's, you know, again, you don't want to, or if you're single and people, you know, family members are, are you dating anybody right now? Or what's going on? Are you getting married? Whatever, you know, um, friends and family, especially family, you know, can sometimes be <laughs> obnoxious to deal with. And I think everybody would agree with that. Um, so, you know, there are a myriad of different reasons why the holidays can be such a challenge for so many people. And so, first of all, um, as I mentioned earlier, I think one thing that's important for us to understand is that, again, the holidays really aren't um, a really exciting and rosy time for a lot of people. Although, that's often what we see, you know, obviously with the commercials, you know, they show families are together and they're always in a beautiful home with all this amazing food and a perfect tree, um, as well as, you know, a lot of TV shows or movies or what have you um, often display this really perfect, beautiful, ideal family where people just get along great. They love each other. Everyone seems to have money, and it's just, you know, this utopia that does not exist, um, I would say, for the majority of Americans, or even a majority of people, you know, around the world. It's, it's not a reality uh, for most people. But sometimes we can kind of get caught up in that, uh, thinking that, oh, you know, there's so many people that are having a beautiful, perfect holiday and I'm not, you know, I have to go see my family that's really abusive or dysfunctional or I'm going to be alone or I have to work or I'm going to be broke or whatever. Um, you know, we think that all these people are going to these really amazing family outings and for a lot of people that's just not the case. It certainly is just, um, you know, kind of a false uh, representation, you know, of what the average family is like. Um, also, uh, for those of you that are single, I know that the holidays can be a difficult time just because you don't have a partner and, and you feel like, you know, because I don't have a partner, I'm, I, I feel alone. Even though if you're going to be with friends and family, even though you might not, you know, technically be alone, um, it, can, it can definitely be a time where you do feel alone because, again, the holidays are often um, represented by happy couples. And so, um, again, it's just a, a, a huge um, just misrepresentation of even what an actual relationship is like, you know. And so I've known people over the years um, in, you know, in my line of work with a lot of clients I've dealt with that were actually not going to be with their partner. And especially if they've been with their partner for several years or married for several years um, because they're going to see their family, maybe their partner has to work at what have you, they're actually kind of looking forward <laughs> to that time, you know, not because they hate their partner or whatever, but just because they're kind of looking forward to that time, you know, where, where they're, they're going to have a part. And um, it's just not, you know, to them, it's just, it's not that big of a deal that if they're together over the holidays, just because, you know, they're with that person all the time. And, um, but yeah, again, it can really just, um, you know, cause even if you were in a relationship, it doesn't mean that you would still have an amazing holiday. You know, um, when you're in a relationship, it definitely, you know, just like anything else in life, Anything, everything comes with pros and cons. Everything, um, you know, at any time you have some, uh, something new in your life, whether it's money, a relationship, what have you, there's always challenges that also come with that, you know. And so even if you're single, the holidays can definitely be an awesome time with family and friends. And um, I wanted to share just a quick story of a client of mine. Uh, that absolutely despised the holidays. Um, she was single and um, she had actually just broken up with a boyfriend that she had that she actually wasn't even really that happy with. But And she dealt with very, very severe, severe depression. And she hated the holidays. She hated it. She hated seeing family members. She hated people asking her questions. Uh, she was on disability um, because her depression was very, very severe that she couldn't work. So she was on disability. 
And at one time, you know, before she went on disability, um, she was an accountant and had a very good job where she made really great money, was very independent, um, had a beautiful apartment and everything, and anything, you know, a, a single woman could ask for. And she lost all that, you know, when she went on disability and stopped working, uh, she had to move in with her parents and uh, it was just a really devastating time for her. So the holidays were something she was not looking forward to at all. So what she decided to do um, was for the the Christmas, uh, uh, this, this was several years ago where Christmas was on a weekend. It was on a Friday, Saturday or something like that. But anyway, she had decided um, to uh, um, reserve a room in a really nice hotel for the night, just for one night. Uh, she made dinner reservations for herself. Um, she made plans to go see a movie, because you know that movie theater is always open on Christmas, because that's what a lot of families love to do on Christmas Day. And she just um, made plans to have a very nice evening where she just treated herself and um, did something that she really enjoyed and decided that she wasn't going to feel discouraged or lonely or depressed. Um, she wasn't going to have to deal with the stress of seeing her family. And she decided she wasn't going to care what people thought about it. You know, that she wasn't there with her family to celebrate the holidays. Because at that time, she just mentally wasn't strong enough or healthy enough to handle all that interaction. So that's what she did. And she ended up having a lovely time. And she said, you know, if I'm still, you know, in this place, I'm mentally or just in this place in my life again next year, I'm going to do probably going to do the same thing. And so I love the fact that instead of um, feeling depressed or isolating herself, um, like in a, in a way that was, you know, would, would um, make her depression even worse, like locking herself in a room or subjecting herself to um, really difficult, challenging family interactions or what have you. I love the fact that she just decided, I'm just going to make this a day about me. I'm going to make this um, a time that I'm looking forward to. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm just going to pretend it's not even Christmas. And so I just love the fact that she uh, took that initiative and she decided to make this a really, uh, to make it a really great weekend for herself. And so the holidays don't have to be um, a really horrible time. A lot of it really is a psychological because again people make such a huge deal out of it and it really you know if, if we focus if, if we put a lot of our energy and we focus so much on the fact that oh it's Christmas it's Thanksgiving it's a big deal everybody has something to do everybody has somewhere to go everybody gets lots of presents blah 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 blah, blah. if we put our focus and our energy you know it into what it should be or what it, it um it seems like it is for everybody else. Yes, of course we're going to be depressed. Or we could just do what my client did and just decide that it's gonna be a great day, maybe plan something um, for ourselves that we're really going to enjoy and do something that um, we're actually looking forward to and just, you know, kind of forget about the fact, you know, that it's Thanksgiving or, or Christmas. You know, because when you think about it, it's really just another day. And for us last year, uh, my husband got actually really sick um, the weekend before Christmas because Christmas was on a Monday and we did nothing, you know, um, we didn't really buy presents. We bought some presents for my dog, <laughs> a couple for my cats, that was it. Um, and actually that was the year before we bought presents for my dog because uh, at, at that time I recently lost my dog. But Christmas was really just another day for us that year. And um we weren't depressed about it. We weren't discouraged or anything. We just decided, well, you know, we don't really have family or friends here. And um, we'll just, you know, relax, watch movies or whatever. And it'll just be another day for us. And that was pretty much it. Um, for those of us that suffer from chronic illness, now that's kind of a totally different story. Um, as many of us, you know, we might have family or, or friends or places to go. But that interaction and just the everything that is involved with the holidays um, can be incredibly exhausting and draining for us. Um, and again, you know, just dealing with um, 
family members that might be difficult to deal with or might even be flat out abusive can be incredibly stressful and draining on us and can even, even send us into a flare. That's why with my clients that I work with that did have chronic illness, I always would encourage them and really stress, only do what you can do during the holidays. Don't, if you're not able to cook the whole Thanksgiving dinner or the whole Christmas dinner, or the whole meal, um, just delegate to other people. And I know most of the time people do bring dishes or whatever, um, or have family members um, come over early or friends come over early to help you set up to get things done. If you're the one, you know, where that, you know, the, the dinner kind of lays on your shoulders. Um, let people know ahead of time that you're gonna need help. Let people know ahead of time um, if they can stay afterwards and help you clean, you know, and just explain to them, you know, don't, don't be shy about asking for your needs, especially if you're, if you're hosting the dinner, like you're, you're the one, you know, who's um, accommodating, you know, a house full of people and you're the one who's putting yourself out, you know, that be, so that you can, you know, provide a beautiful, wonderful meal for your friends and your family. You know, let them know that if, if, if you want them to, um, if they want you to make this happen, you're going to need help. That they're going to have to come early to help you set up and they're going to have to stay afterwards to help you clean. So that way it won't be so overwhelming for you. Um, maybe let people know, you know, uh, especially close family members ahead of time, um, that you're going to need to take a few breaks, you know, during the dinner. You maybe you, you, you'll need to uh, take 20 minutes to go lay down um, in your bedroom for a little while and ask people just not to bother you. And if people ask, you know, oh, where's, you know, so-and-so, um, say, oh, she just, you know, she went to rest for a few minutes and that's it. They don't need to know anything else. They don't need to know um, all the different illnesses that you're dealing with. You know, they don't need to know, oh, well, she has fibromyalgia and lupus and also she has back injuries and she's also, you know, like you don't need to, they, all they need to say is, she went to lay down, she'll be back out in a few minutes. And that's it, you know? And so, and I know, especially if you have people that are coming in that you haven't seen in a really long time, and you don't get to see very often, you might feel guilty, you know, taking time out, you know, from the festivities to get some rest. But those are things that, and, and this is just something in general um, that, as for those of us that suffer from chronic illness, we really just need to get over just that feeling of guilt when we need to take a break and take care of ourselves. Because what you don't want is to send yourself off, off into a horrible flare that's going to last for days and maybe even weeks. And now the people that live in your household with you, even if it's just your husband, are going to have to you know deal with that. And it's going to be difficult for them as it is for you. And, um, you know, it just ends up being a, a, a bad situation, you know, for everybody. So certainly be honest and just let people know what you need. And if you need to take a break, take a break and don't feel guilty about it. Um, another idea would be to um, maybe uh, order a dinner ahead of time from your local grocery store. I had a client that did this. Um, she suffered from MS. It was very difficult for her to be on her feet for hours at a time, cooking and getting you know everything ready. So she um, reserved ahead of time a, a dinner from the local grocery store where they had the turkey and the potatoes and the stuffing and everything. And all she had to do was go pick it up and bring it home. There was no cleanup because she didn't cook and everything was absolutely delicious and you know it worked out fantastic and she said that the cost difference between you know buying all the ingredients and cooking it and actually ordering it um at, at a at a grocery store ahead of time to have it prepared that it really wasn't that expensive like it really wasn't that much more expensive at all and it was a, a very you know the difference was very minuscule so However, for her, the difference was um, astronomical because after the dinner, uh, she didn't feel incredibly exhausted uh, or not as exhausted as she normally did. She definitely did feel tired after, you know, um, everything was over and everybody had gone home. But 
she also didn't have that stress of, oh my God, I'm going to have to get up at six o'clock tomorrow and start the turkey and get everything ready. And I'm dealing with insomnia tonight and I'm going to be up all, you know, she didn't have that stress to deal with. So that's another idea of something you can do, you know, to help just uh, relieve some of the stress of preparing the meal. If you're someone who is going to someone's house and um, they're the one hosting the dinner, if you can only stay um, for an hour, again, let them know ahead of time. You don't have to tell them your life story or your whole medical diagnosis. Just, you know, let them know ahead of time. Um, you know, I, I haven't been feeling too well lately, so I'm probably gonna end up staying for an hour. Um, and then, but I do want to come. It's very important to me that I am there, you know, um, to see you and um, other friends or family, what have you. But I'm probably not going to be able to stay long. And I just want to let you know now because I don't want you to feel hurt um, when I have to leave early. But if I am feeling better, certainly I'll stay longer. But, you know, just to let you know ahead of time, I might not be able to stay very long. Um, and so, you know, just, just let people know, let people know, um, what your limitations are. And again, you don't have to go into all this detail. You can be very general and, you know, let them know that this is what you're, you're capable of. This is what you're going to be able to do. And that's it. And so also another difficult thing about, um, being around family in the holidays. And again, this is a for a lot of us that suffer from severe depression or chronic illness, is also dealing with our family's insensitivity. Um, and sometimes our family, for a lot of people, can be the most insensitive people when it comes to our illness. And we, you know, some of us do have family members that don't even believe that we're sick. And if we do need to rest or we do need to leave early or what have you, they're going to be very critical. They're going to have something snarky to say or, you know, whatever. Um, and in situations like that, you can't, you can't worry about what they think or what they say. Um, I think for a lot of us that have been dealing with a chronic illness for a long time, We've just come to the realization that there are going to be people in our life, friends or family or both, um, that are just not going to understand what we're dealing with. They're just not going to understand the extent and the gravity of our illness and how much it really impacts our everyday life. And just because it's Thanksgiving doesn't mean all of our pain is now gone. And we can all of a sudden, you know, go spend a whole, you know, a whole day, you know, around a large group of people. And um, especially if we're the one that's going to be cooking and serving those people, you know, it's like our illness didn't, did, it doesn't magically go away on that day. And as far as people and family members that are going to be insensitive to it, you just can't let it rattle you. And I know that is so much easier said than done. But the reality is there are going to be people in our lives who will not be able to understand or even accept our illness. And the conclusion that I have come to with people in my life that have been that way um, is that's their problem. That's not my problem. You know, I, I know, <laughs> I know what I deal with every day. I know what symptoms I have. I know what my doctors have told me, what different tests have shown and revealed and what have you. And I don't need to justify or explain it to someone. You know, if someone is going to um, harass me, you know, about my symptoms and, you know, try to imply that I'm not sick or it's not nearly as bad as, as what I'm, as, as, um, as what, what I show or, or what have you, um, then that's not someone that I really need to be around. If you do have a family that is going to be abusive and, and you know that it's just going to be a horrible time for you, maybe you need to sit it out. You know, maybe you just, again, just, just need to be honest with your family and say, you know, every time I see you guys, you guys um, harass me, you're insensitive to me, you're judgmental towards me, 
And I, I'm sorry, but I physically and mentally just cannot deal with that. And that, you know, is a consequence for them uh, on how they've treated you. And so, you know, maybe you just need to be honest and maybe just go to um, a friend's house instead, a friend that you really know, or maybe you have a friend that isn't really doing anything and you guys are really close and the two of you can just have a nice little dinner together, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, one thing that's very important to remember during the holidays is that we don't have to live up to certain people's expectations just because, you know, it's the holidays. Uh, we don't have to li really live up to anybody's expectations. And I don't mean that, you know, in, in a way where, um, you know, we shouldn't, you know, be considerate or, or compassionate of how our illness affects the people around us. Of, of course, we do need to consider how it affects them as well. Um, but that's a, actually a, a whole nother video um, for me to talk about. But, um, you know, we don't, you know, we, we don't have to meet up to the expectations that a lot of people have, you know, during this time of year. And so um, it's, it's just important that we don't allow ourselves, you know, to fall into deep depression and guilt if we're just not able to participate in a lot of the festivities that are planned. And, um, and you know, maybe some people's feelings are going to be hurt or they're just not going to understand. But unfortunately, that's just the, the reality of our illness. It's the reality of our life situation right now. And um, we just have to be at peace, you know, with the fact that, you know, there's going to be people that are going to be insensitive and, you know, aren't really going to know how to respond or react to it. And we just can't let it, um, you know, penetrate us too much. You know, we, we can't let it, um, you know, just completely dominate our, our thought process, you know, because, oh, you know, this person treats me this way or this person said this about me or my illness or, or they said oh you look fine to me um you don't look sick uh which are you know very very common <laughs> comments that that we often get from people and sometimes not always in an insensitive way um but you know we can't um you know just um allow ourselves to focus on a lot of the negative comments that friends or family members might say to us um, when we're seeing, you know, people that we often, you know, we don't see, um, uh, frequently. And so, um, unfortunately there's just, you know, if they don't, um, have compassion, if, if they don't believe us, they don't believe us. And there's really nothing we can do about it, you know? And again, that that's on them. That's not on you. So, but I just wanted to encourage you guys, you know, that the holidays do not have to be a horrible time. Um, they don't, you know, um, have to live up, you know, to the standards and the expectations that, um, the media presents or that other family members or friends might think it should be or what have you, um, make the holidays something that's going to be an enjoyable time for you by taking the, pr the right steps and planning ahead of time to make sure that you're taken care of, whether you're going to be alone for the holidays, um, and maybe you plan to go do something fun, you know, even if it's just by yourself. Um, or you are going to be with family and, you know, it's going to take a lot of energy and you'll need to, you know, take breaks or whatever. Um, whatever it is, you know, just plan ahead of time that, you know, this is going to be a time of year where you're going to put your needs first. Where you're going to do um, whatever you feel you need to do as long as it's not, you know, um, harmful to yourself or anybody else. Uh, but you're going to do whatever you need to um, to get through this and just, you know, for this to even possibly be an enjoyable time of year for you. But I know it's hard, guys. Uh, I understand, you know, um, I don't know what, what the statistics are, but we've all heard that suicides are always um, highest around this time of the year. And again, it's just because... Um, a lot of people just feel, you know, it's just kind of a huge reminder to a lot of people that a lot of things in our life that aren't the way we wish it was, you know, um, just it, it are um, 
in a much <laughs> different place than we thought it would be or, or the way that we hoped it would. You know, it, it's just a big reminder of that sometimes that there's a lot of things in our life that um, we wish were a certain way and they're not, you know, and that's true for, for most people, some more so than others, of course. So, all right, guys, well, I just wanted to, you know, try to get this video out there um, before the holidays. I wanted to do it sooner, but um, just with work and everything, I just haven't had the time to sit down and do this. But, and I hope it did help some of you, um, you know, with, you know, a lot of the anxiety that you might be dealing with right now. Um, just, you know, to, to give you some tips and um, some encouragement, you know, that, that it's okay. You know, you're not alone in how you feel. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't have to be um, a horrible experience for you every year. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in, um, especially for this long video. And uh, remember, take care of yourself, especially this holiday season. Protect yourself physically and emotionally. Don't forget, your physical and mental health are your greatest asset. Invest in it. Bye-bye.